Very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, depending on where you are. My talk is, uh, today is on uh, integrated corneal tomography for refractive cataract surgery. These are the contents of my talk. We all know uh, for premium IOL, we have to do certain diagnostic tests. In Beside the normal ocular examinations, and so on and so on. First, we need to assess that the, uh, the dry eye assessment to make sure the eyes are not too dry. And uh, that we try of course, uh, as Michael Lawless will be saying, affects the visual outcome. We need to do to corneal tomography to assess suitability for certain, especially premium IRL. Biometry is a must. And of course, at the end, uh, retinal tomography as well to exclude the patient who have a retinal pathology who may be good, good outcomes. Well, the IOR Master 700 has been around for a while. It gives us corneal thickness and deviated chamber depth, lens thickness and axial length as well. It also gives us the keratometry. And the last two, three years, the telecentric keratometry together with the corneal thickness were able to give us the total corneal power or TK. However, instead of assessing the keratometry, the aging centroids as a group, why not we analyze them individually, each and every point relative to one another? Each, because it's a centroid, it has two degree of uh, freedom as opposed to a Myers, which is always radially skewed. And by analyzing each and every centroid, we were able to do a Zernike modeling, which will give us the various wavefront component. And from there, we can then morph an anterior corneal power and the corneal power map as well, anterior corneal surface and then anterior corneal map. Of course, with the corneal thickness and the intracorneal distances, we can also, from the anterior power corneal map, we can now also generate the posterior corneal map and together be able to generate the total axial powers map for the for the cornea. So this is one step further using the same IOR Master 700. Well, this is an example of an axial map of power maps. All right. It has a default scale. It has 21 colors stand up. This is what happens to most of the cornea within the normal range. Of course, if the cornea is very steep, then the scale will move up keeping its 21 colors, 10 diopter scale at half a diopter step. If it's too flat, then the scale will move down. Of course, there are some unusual cornea, which is just power spread much more than that. Then we have the extended scale, and this will be more than 21 colors or more than 10 diopters, in, again, in half a diopter step. The important thing is the green color is all is always 44 diopters. So that's the compass. That's the bearing uh, in which we read all the different maps. So this is the power scales in the Iowa Master 700 axial or anterior axial map or the total axial powers map. So this is the anterior axial powers and this is the total axial powers. Well, we look at the similarities. We need to first, because this is only limited to 18 centroids, limited to about four, four and a half to five millimeters. We want to compare it with a normal conventional uh, corneal tomograph for, like, for serious by CSO. So we we'll, first we take the serious map and then we restrict down to about the same size as the IOR master map. Even though we fit the same side, it is not exactly the same because there's uh, involved interpolation and extrapolation from points outside this zone. Just for comparison, we will stick to that. So first and foremost, we look at, we set the scale to the same step of diopters to, for fair comparison. We look at the minimum power of each map and then we look at the maximum power of both maps. And then we look at the range of power as well. So from there, we generate a chart, the flattest power and the steepest power. The white axis is the series maps and the X axis is the Iowa Master 700 map. 
Well, from here you can see that it is quite lean. No? And my blend hormones test on the right hand side for the flattest power and the steepest power, most of the points are within the 95 percentiles, the level of confidence. And the difference for the flattest power is almost negligible, while the steepest power is only 0.1 diopters. This is the step. We, instead of looking at power, we look at the difference in step between the series map and the Iowa Master 7. And each step is half a diopter. From here, you can say that about 40%, the, whether the minimum power or the maximum power of the power range, that is the difference between maximum and minimum, is about is the same. All right, there's no difference. And about 80% is within half a diopter on either side, either plus side or minus side. So as far as power is concerned, it is quite similar up to the same zone size. The next thing we look at the axis, there are four axes, superior steep, superior flat, and then the inferior steep, inferior flat, and inferior steep. Now this, because without the raw data, we can only base on the shapes, the color, the step, subjectively determines the, the various axes here. And so we, at best resolution is probably about 10 degrees or so. So then we compare the flat axis, the superior and inferior. You can see that they are about 20 degrees of each other, or 15 degrees on either side of each other. This is a steep axis. Again, you can see that they are quite, uh, there's a relationship quite linear between both the serious map as well as the Iowa Master 700 generated maps. There are four eyes in determinate because some of the, four of the maps are quite difficult to generate axis or to eyeball and have an axis. So we exclude that and then we look at those that uh, we can determine the axis subjectively. So from here, we can say that about 70 percent, two thirds of them have the same four, have the same axis, superior flat, superior state, inferior flat and inferior state. And about 90% of dams are within 10 degrees of one another on either side. So they are quite similar. And finally, we look at the corneal shape. This is based on the Rabinovich classifications. My wife said now we match both first the general shape and then the axis as well. So this is, for example, this is a good control agreement, the asymmetric bow tie with skew radial axis index. So this is a, a table of all the eyes, all right? So when we look at all this together, we do a corneal score. The pattern, there are three points, either no zero match, one where that means either the, the shape is similar to only those, the skew radial axis or the, the, the steepest axis is similar, or three both are similar. The axis, there are four points because there are four axes. The power, there are three points. So from all this, we generate a score. The auto is automatically determined, and the final is a little bit of um, a manual adjustment. Okay, from here you can say, uh, for example, three or four, there are more than 50%, and two, three, four, that means quite similar. They are close to 70, 80%. So most of the map between Sirius and Iowa Master are quite similar. So it shows that the Iowa Master maps are quite, uh, can be quite reliable, up to 4 mm. But they are, of course, dissimilarity as well. So for example, this map here, you can see the central within the Sirius, there's a lot more, there's a, a bit more power changes while the IOR master is relatively clean. And this happens in a few of the maps. The series seem to be able to pick up some uh, some speaks, some color changes at the center, it's a bit more sensitive in the center. These are usually due to dry eyes. These are speakers of color. So if you cover them up, then you can see the two maps are actually quite similar. Of course, the other thing is the series is a full-blown corneal map, so we have 
all the way to the periphery of IR Master 700, it's just within the four to five millimeter zone. So it doesn't have to be on. Uh, having said that, the four to five millimeter is functional because that's where we see our eyes see. Anything more will just be a, a corneal shape, a total corneal shape more than something that is very functional. We will elaborate a little bit more on this later. All right. But if you look at the state, the, the indices, all right, these are usually happens, this kind of thing usually happen to those with low astigmatism, like in this case, 0 0.58, 0 0.56. I use the SIMK and, and GIGA 3MM, the IO master. This is the IO master generated keratometry. Right? You can see that the power is about the same. All right, the axis is slightly off, but this is because it's a low astigmatism. Sometimes for low estimatism, there's a little bit more variation in the axis. This is not so well defined compared to when the estimatism is higher. This patient have 939 implanted because it seems reasonably uh, uh, even corneal cells and uh, with a one diopter astigmatism and post op at one month he has uh, is totally amitropia with a six six visual acuity. Data. Uh, next, we will see some clinical cases as well. All right. Now, this patient will be put in a premium ROL. This is a very flat cornea. This is a typical of a post myopic lazy cornea. Of course, it's up to you. I generally don't put in multifocals in a patient who have had uh, laser refractive surgery done, especially if they pre lasik they have high myopia or high hyperopia, but it's up to your confidence level. But the, the max is able to tell us, of course, it is still better to ask the patient if they have had any late corneal refractive surgery done. This is confirmed by the op scan. The left hand side is the anterior axiomac, which is, of course, much higher because this is not a keratometric axiomac, and the left hand side. Sorry, the right, the left hand side is the axial ex, uh, anterior axial map. The left hand side is total axial map, which is closer to the keratometry. All right. In this case, this patient is a post myopic LASIK. Whether you want to do put in a premium IOL, I generally don't recommend. So, but if you want to, to be very confident, it's entirely up to you. In this case, I put in a monofocal, which is a torrent, all right? And this is post-operatively, you still have some astigmatism, but it is not true. But, but if this is a multifocal, I think it will be more difficult. Bear in mind, the post-refractive surgery IOR power calculation is less precise than the virgin eye. And that's another reason why I do not like to put in multifocal in this case. This is a second eye. Now, this is something that I we do. I like to use. This eye looks relatively normal, except that it looks a little bit flat, not too flat, but you know, the power is very homogeneous. Now, this is something we have to be careful before and map. All right, even with a full blown, uh, normal, established tomo corneal tomography, it is hard to tell if this eye is. Unusual. It looks like a normal eye, except that in this case, it's a little bit more flat in the center than the periphery. That's one clue. Of course, if you look at the total picture, you know this is the total actual map. This probably have some dry eyes here. It's relatively flat. Well, this patient has had LASIK done. A myopic LASIK is not a very high correction. Why so? Therefore, the, the corneal power is 42, a little bit on the flat side, it's not too flat. But what is interesting is that the IO master repeated measurements show that the corneal, the central corneal thickness, is on the thin side. So, this is something that even a conventional corneal tomographer may have difficulty identifying a post myopic LASIK, a low myopic LASIK patient. So 
you have to ask the patient the best if you can, if the patient can remember. Of course, the other index of suspicion is the thin corneal pachymetry, which is available from Iowa Master 700. Well, in this case, again, premium Iowa are not, like I said, I generally avoid premium Iowa. This is the last case on the left. Now, this patient from the Iowa Master Map, it looked like obvious there's a lot of cornea stiffening inferiorly, right? And there's a lot of changes of power inferiorly. You can see the scale uh, change a little bit in the anterior axial map. Okay, this looks like a curato corners. Okay, with a full blown map, it's become more obvious. But actually, this patient has a post LASIK mild curato activation. All right. The Iowa Master Map is able to pick this up. So the clue here is obviously if you have looked at the periphery, there's a lot of stiffening and a lot of power changes, then you may want to proceed to a full uh, convention established corneal tomography. All right. The Iowa Master is able to pick this up as well. The central topography of the Iowa Master is quite similar to a zone limited full corneal topography. This is one of the conclusion. That is very functional because as we go older, our pupils will get smaller, and this is the zone that is relevant. It is less noisy than a conventional tomography because it's probably the resolution is less, but in a way it is good because it gives us a, a cleaner picture. However, there's some caution First, if you see a flat, gentle weight pattern, as I showed you just now with thin cornea, be very suspicious. You may want to take a good history from the patient and uh, uh, go on to do a full cornea tomography. Secondly, if you look at the periphery, there's a rapid sleep changes. It is not a full cone. You may want to go on to do a full cornea tomography because the cone may be a bit more para to central and may not be picked up by this uh, re relatively smaller size center, central corneal tomography. So now for pre-op screening, we have the standard biometry. You can do IOR power calculation. You can do IOR toric power calculation. You can do IOR toric power align. And with TK, it gave us a post, good post-refractive surgery IOR power calculation. And I think TK will also help us in complex IOR power calculation as well. But today, with the disintegrated corneal tomography, even though it's center, today it adds a new dimension. It is able to give us some, at least some basic IOR screening. All right, so one less machine to have. It is good. It is good for practices without a sand corneal tomographer or topographer. In the solo practice, for example, if you find a, a corneal tomographer or topographer too expensive, but this does not displace a dedicated corneal topographer tomographer. It is a good screening tool nonetheless, but it's not so much for corneal, it's more for cataract surgery. With that, thank you for your attention.